Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well. In honor of the Assassin's Creed 3 10 year anniversary, I thought I would do a video dedicated to this game. Assassin's Creed 3 is a game that is forever ingrained into my memory. It holds a very special place in my heart for so many different reasons. From a personal standpoint, 2012 was a great and very memorable year for me in many ways. I was newly single after getting out of a toxic relationship. I had started attending a new church and had gained many new friends most of which I am still very close with today. It was the last Thanksgiving and Christmas I was able to spend with my late grandfather, and I had just gotten a new dog that November named Rocky. He's an Australian cattle dog, if you were wondering, and he's still doing wonderful today. I remember driving four hours just to pick him up from a local farm, around the same time I bought Assassin's Creed 3. Speaking of that, I have a snapshot in my head of standing outside of Best Buy on Black Friday in 2012 with a good friend of mine. The line had to be half a mile long or more, it was absolutely crazy, but we had to get those Black Friday deals. It was one of the last times I was excited to go Black Friday shopping, because since then I just shop mostly online. I actually bought Assassin's Creed 3 a couple weeks before Black Friday, but I remember seeing it on the shelf in Best Buy that night. When I was playing the game that November, Rocky was still a puppy, and every time I made that whistle sound on the game to attract a nearby enemy, Rocky's ears would just go up and he would tilt his head at the TV, so I just kept whistling and it was hilarious to watch Rocky react. These are just some of the memories I have with this game and 2012 in general. So now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about the game itself. For the support of the glorious cause, I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there as is pay, no man better sir, suited I to the task. To assure really? The Congress that I can no think of several. Consideration could have Charles me Lee. To have accepted this arduous employment at the do I know you? I would not expect happiness. you to remember. I do Come, not wish Connor, to make any someone I want you to meet. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. Sorry to pull you away Those like that, I doubt but not they will the last thing we need and is that the is two all of you I coming to blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor. Before I get too deep, I just want to say that this was my first deep dive into an Assassin's Creed game. I previously played Assassin's Creed 1 and Assassin's Creed 2, but something just didn't grab me about those games. I know saying that about Assassin's Creed 2 is downright blasphemous, but 3 is the game that really caught my attention. So really, Assassin's Creed 3 was my first foray into the series in a big way. With that groundwork being laid, let's get into it. So Assassin's Creed 3 is a Ubisoft title that came out in October of 2012. The story primarily centers around Connor, one of Desmond's ancestors, and takes place during the American Revolution in the late 1700s. The game actually starts you out playing as Hatham Kenway, Connor's father. Now that Kenway name will ring a bell for most fans because that's actually Edward Kenway's son. Edward Kenway is the protagonist of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which came out a couple years later. So you have this lineage that's very interesting to follow throughout the games, and that is part of the reason why this series is so appealing to so many players. The story is still a typical Assassins vs Templars, and takes advantage of the whole 2012 end of the world craze that was going on at the time with the Aztec calendar. So the whole point is Desmond going into the Animus, back to the Revolutionary War, to try and prevent the end of the world from happening in 2012. So really in this game you play as three different people. And I must say the Hatham Kenway portions may be my favorite. He may not be the most likable character, but the storytelling in those parts was some of the best, and that character just has so much depth. As Connor, who you play as the most, you get to explore Boston, New York, and the American frontier. You'll spend most of your time both helping and fighting certain important figures during that historical time. We see names like the great George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Charles Lee, Sam Adams, Paul Revere, and so many more. And as to the last of my reasons, 
Well, it's really quite simple. Older women are so very grateful for the attention. You make a compelling argument, Mr. Frank. I might just have to run a few tests myself. I highly recommend it. Since this is my favorite time period in American history, it was a dream come true for me to play this game and see some of those people. The historical accuracy is questionable at certain moments, and not everything is going to fall in line perfectly. However, the game does a great job of teaching history, whether that was the goal or not. On the pause menu in the Animus database, you can delve deep into historical locations, people, and things of that nature. They give you a few paragraphs on each item with some fun facts and even quirky humor. They even poke fun at the American education system, basically saying you don't learn much about history anymore. Now, this game came out when I was in college, and I must say I probably learned the same amount, if not more, from Assassin's Creed 3 that I did in history class. I would even do my own research at times to see what the game was telling me was true. More often than not, it was historically accurate. He has dozens, if not hundreds, of soldiers at his command. Cannot hope to match him by yourself. But fear not, for you will not have to. We have an entire army of our own, merely awaiting the order to take up arms. Then you must call upon them. Indeed. You and I will cross the Charles River and rouse the boys. William, I need you to take the overland route and do the same. Robert, I need you up in Christchurch. Light the signal. Two lanterns, our enemy comes by sea. No time for dawdling, my friend. We have lives to save. Come on. What makes it so fun and intriguing is how you do get to play alongside these historical figures at real historical locations like Valley Forge, Boston, and so many more. And we even get to see what some of the historical events such as the Boston Massacre and Boston Tea Party look like. I think a lot of people were very let down when the game finally released because it looked nothing like the trailers that they advertised. But to be fair, that trailer was epic and extremely cinematic and I don't know how they would ever live up to that. I think you just have to tamper your expectations. It came out on PS3 hardware and no one should have expected it to look that good. But in all fairness, I somewhat agree with some people's complaints about the game overall. The battles in the field felt stiff and uninspiring and some of the locations were not very fleshed out. The AI was often unaware and downright stupid at times, and the frontier area felt barren. I totally see these complaints and agree with them, but for me the game makes up for its failures with so many great achievements. Speaking of the American frontier section, it's the glue that holds the open world together. Despite the complaints of some saying it feels empty, there's an argument to be had for the other side. There are plenty of things to see and do. As the story progresses you'll eventually get to speak to and work with artisans, lumberers, hunters, and more. There are individual side missions spread throughout the frontier. I remember one mission specifically that stuck with me, where British soldiers ha had attacked a farmer and killed all of his animals. All you had to do is kill the soldiers, but a cutscene followed where Connor offered to bring the farmer and his wife back to the homestead to rebuild their farm. It was a pretty emotional moment, and these are spread throughout the game. What happened? They demanded we give our entire yield to the crown. Warren refused. They killed our animals, salted our earth, then dragged us out. You saw what followed. I'm afraid we have nothing to give you in thanks, stranger. We have nothing left. Perhaps there is something you could do instead. Anything. I live in a small community not far from here. The soil is rich. The people I live with would have need of fresh vegetables, wheat, or corn. If you were to rebuild your farm, you may prosper. What kindness is this? You certainly come see. Thank you. Also, there are many different collectibles to find in the frontier, like feathers and treasure chests. It's actually kind of fun and addicting to try to track everything down. Assassin's Creed 3 has a gripping story. It has memorable and familiar characters that are fun to interact with. It has epic historical locations. It's like taking a mini history lesson in the American Revolution. And personally, I like Connor as a character. He seemed to have good intentions and his design is unique and memorable. I know his voice and demeanor can be grating and annoying at times, but overall I thought he was a good protagonist. As a whole, this story is engaging and proves to be emotional and intense. 
This would not be an Assassin's Creed game without letting us play in modern day. These sections where you play as Desmond are just fine. It's necessary for the story to progress and ultimately came to a conclusion. But each time I was out of the Animus, I was itching to go back in. Because the history part is the real meat and potatoes of Assassin's Creed. I'm just still holding out hope that we can get an Animus in real life because I'd love to go back in the late 1700s, at least for a few days to see what it was like and rub shoulders with the likes of Washington and Franklin. Like any great Assassin's Creed game should do, stealth is put at the forefront, as you can assassinate enemies in a variety of ways. The parkour system only continued to improve as getting around the frontier is easy and such a joy. Combat consists of attacking, parrying, blocking, etc. It's very similar to Assassin's Creed 2, only improved upon. There are a few guns in the game, but using stealth and your blades are encouraged. This game was also the first time naval exploration and combat were introduced. It was a big step for the series, making it feel more open world and adding another layer to the gameplay. The naval portions were some of my favorite parts of the game. The ship combat is very fun and engaging. Assassin's Creed 3 looked pretty solid back in 2012, and it holds up fairly well today. Something that really stands out in the game is the soundtrack, which is remarkably well done, and fits the time period perfectly. I often listen to the soundtrack when I'm in the car just to give me a bit of a nostalgia rush. The sound design overall is pretty good as well. And in 2019, the game did get a remaster for PS4, which included 4K resolution, a better frame rate, upgraded character models, and improved rendering. Obviously, I played through the game again and loved it just as much as before. It's great to have a cleaner, more modern version of the game out there. In the back of my mind, I always ponder the idea of what if the game came out as a PS5 game. I bet it would be astounding and even more immersive. So guys, that about wraps up my thoughts on Assassin's Creed 3 for the 10 year anniversary. I hope I was able to cover everything regarding Assassin's Creed 3. Despite its flaws, it will always be special to me personally for all the reasons I just stated. Despite its flaws, it will always be a special game to me personally for so many reasons. If you've never played it, be sure to check it out on PS4 or even Switch. And if you're enjoying my content, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell to be notified for future videos. And there's a link in the description below if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Here we are. Speak with the harbor master, and he'll see you home. Thank you for everything, Sam. I promise one day to repay the favor. Oh, I'm counting on it. Like this.